are those people who have been tried harder and we should praise Allah Ta'ala. He said, so we should praise Allah at the time we are going through a trial or hardship. We should praise Allah Ta'ala and we should not be ungrateful when we are going through a trial or hardship and remember that it could be worse than what it is and there are many people who are being tried harder than we are. He said, so when we are tried, reflect upon the many blessings that Allah has given you. When you are tried, reflect upon the many blessings that he has given you. And he said, and it has been mentioned of by some of the people. And they had their children were in car accidents. And their children were in car accidents. And as a result, they died. And their children were killed in car accidents. And what did they say? They said, all praises belong to Allah. The one who has taken away some of our children, but left us with others. He has, all praises belong to Allah. He has taken away some of our children, but he has left us with other children. So they would praise Allah even though they were going through a hardship. He said, and there's no doubt that losing a child is a traumatic event, but they would praise Allah Ta'ala because he left them with other children. He said, so we should praise Allah when we're going through a trial. Nah, and, and, and understand that the trials that we go through are not equal to the blessings that he, give us, that he gives us. In other words, the blessings... By far outnumber the trials and tribulations. Naam ya Sheikh Al Fadl. Walla al ayatah al awal lati ashar fi layha fi matwa al hadithi bi anna al nazar ila man fawqahu fa huwa amun fi kulli shayi min umur al dunya fa huwa fawluhu tabarak wa ta'ala la tabuddanna aynayka ila ma matta'na bihi azwajan minhum ولا تحزن عليهم اخذوا جناحك للمؤمنين في سورة الحجر الآية الثامنة والثمانين فهنا ارشاد من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ارشاد من الله عز وجل لنبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن لا ينظر إلى ما تمتع به الكفار من أنواع نعيم الدنيا وبأن لا يحزن على كفرهم وأن يتواضع للمؤمنين بالله ورسوله وفي الآية الأخرى في سورة طه في الآية 131 قوله تبارك وتعالى ولا تمدن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم زهرة الحياة الدنيا لنفتنهم فيه ورزق ربك خير وأبقى ورزق ربك خير وأبقى هذه من الأمور التي ينبغي أن يلاحظها المسلم ولا ينظر إلى النعيم الذي ينعم به الكفار إن لم يجد الإنسان بعض هذه النعيم في الدنيا فإن هذا النعيم عندهم زائل وكل نعيم في الدنيا زائل ولكن النعيم الباقي والنعيم الدائم إنما هو النعيم الذي يرزقه الله عز وجل لمن يوفق طاعته وبالنعيم لما عد الله لعباده في جنته وذلك النعيم الذي هو الخلود في تلك الجنة وهذا هو النعيم الثابت فالإنسان لا يجد في نفسه حسرة إذا وجد من الكفار أو غير المسلمين من التمتع في هذه الدنيا فإن النعيم الدائم والمقيم هو الذي يوفق رضاعة الله عز وجل وما ينعم به ربنا عز وجل على عباده في جنته نعم آية آي أولى يا شيخ الآية الأولى في سورة الحجر 88 لا تمدن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم ولا تحزن عليهم واخفض جناحك للمؤمنين نعم الثانية في طاها 131 هل أعيدها؟ نعم يا شيخ الثانية الثانية في سورة طه 131 ولا تمدن عينيك إلى ما متعنا به أزواجا منهم زهرة الحياة الدنيا لهم فيه ورزق ربك خير وأبقى هذه في طه نعم بارك الله فيكم يا شيخنا نعم so then الشيخ he mentions another virtue and he says 
And he mentions that there are also two verses from the Quran that are going to go along with these um, ahadith, meaning these these hadith about not looking at those people who have more than you in terms of the dunya affairs. Not looking at those who have more than you in terms of the dunya affairs. And the first verse is in, in, um, in Surah, chapter number 15, verse number 88. When Allah Ta'ala says, what can be translated as, Look not with your eyes, with ambition at what we have bestowed upon certain classes of the disbelievers, nor grieve over them, and lower your wings for the believers, and be courteous. So he says, this is for us to not look at what they have been given, the disbelievers, and desire what they have been given. He said, so a person should not look at the blessings of the kuffar and envy what they have, because their blessings and their virtue are only for this world. And this world is going to end. He said, and in fact, every blessing in this world is going to end. And the blessing that will stay forever is what Allah Ta'ala has given the believers. And the other verse is in Surah Taha, which is chapter number 20, verse number 131. Where Allah Ta'ala says, what can be translated as, And strain not your eyes in longing for the things we have given them for enjoyment to various groups of the disbelievers. The splendor of this, um, the splendor of the life of this world that we may test them thereby. So don't look longing for the things that we haven't given them, which, which are only an enjoyment for this world, that we may test them thereby. But the provision of your Lord is better and more lasting. He said, so this is a prohibition for us to look at what the kuffar have been given in this world from splendor and enjoyment. Because the bliss of, that Allah Ta'ala has for the believers is more lasting. And so the Sheikh says again that every blessing in the dunya shall come to an end. And the blessing that Allah Ta'ala has for the believers in paradise will last forever. So do not desire what Allah Ta'ala has given the, the disbelievers, but rather seek the reward that Allah Ta'ala has prepared for the believers. Naam ya Shaykhana. <laughs> من الآثار عن السلف رحمه الله تتعلق بمصاحبة الأغنياء وذلك يعني من الحذر أحيانا ومن الحث على مصاحبة المساكين ومخالطتهم وذلك لأن الإنسان قد يصاحب ذلك إن صاحب الأغنياء وكان دون ذلك شيء من الازدراء والاحتقار بنعمة الله عز وجل وقد يورث في نفسه غما وهما ولهذا كان يقول احد التابعين وهو عون بن عبد الله ابن عتبه بن مسعود كان يقول يجالس الاغنياء الذي يجالس الاغنياء لا يزال في غم لانه يرى من هو احسن منه لباسا ومركبا ومسكنا ومطعما فلهذا يقول يعني تركهم يقول وجالس المساكين وجالس المساكين بعد ذلك يقول فوجد الراحه في في نفسه هذا كان من كلام بعض الصرف بان مصاحبه الاغنياء قد تورث الحزن في الانسان ومصاحبه الفقراء فيها الراحه والاطمئنان طبعا هذا كما قلنا اذا كانت هذه مصاحبه تورث هذه الاشياء في النفس ولا يعني هذا من الانسان لا يصاحب الان من هو اغنى منه كانت هذه مصاحبة تورث الاحتقار وعدم شكر نعمة الله سبحانه وتعالى الإنسان لا يحرص على الفسقة منها لأنها تورث عدم شكر الله عز وجل على نعمه الكثيرة والإنسان أدرى بنفسه وبما يزيد في إيمانه وبما يزيد في طاعته وبما يزيد من قربه إلى الله تبارك وتعالى Nah. And then the Sheikh, may Allah preserve him and bless him, he said, Now I'm going to mention to you some narration from our Salaf, from our pious predecessors. That they would say, To be careful with sitting with the rich. As sometimes to sit with the rich, it may increase you in your sadness. It may increase you, increase you in your sadness when you see what Allah has given the rich from their clothing and from their wealth. And it may make you reflect upon what you do not have from the dunya affairs. He said, so, and then he mentioned a narration from 
Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said that if we would sit with the rich, then it would bring about some type of sadness. He said, so then we would leave them and go sit with the poor and it would bring about ease. We'll leave them and go sit with the poor and it will bring about ease. So he said, if you sit with the rich and you see what Allah Ta'ala has favored them with from money and from clothes and from the things of this life, then it could, it's, it's possible that it can make the person sad. But when you go sit with those people who are less than you, meaning the people who are poor in poverty, then inshallah ta'ala it will increase you in appreciation for what Allah Ta'ala has given you. And I mean, it will make the person happy and he will realize that Allah Ta'ala has favored him with a lot. So he said, sitting with the rich, it could be a way that it can make the person ungrateful for what Allah Ta'ala has given him. So this is a, a caution that the person has to be cautious when sitting with those people who have more than him. Na'ani shaykhana. هذا الحديث العظيم ذكر فضيلته واهميته عدد من العلماء لذلك ان الامام ابن جرير الطبري الامام المفسر المؤرخ العظيم يقول عن هذا الحديث انه حديث جامع لانواع من الخير حديث جامع لانواع من الخير لان الانسان إذا رأى من فضل عليه في الدنيا طلبت نفسه مثل ذلك واستصغر ما عنده من نعمة من نعمة الله تعالى وحرص على الازدياد ليلحق بذلك أو يقاربه هذا هو الموجود في غالب الناس ليس كل الناس يلزم أن يكون كذلك وأما إذا نظر في أمور الدنيا إلى من هو دونه فيها ظهرت له نعمة الله فشكرها وتغاضع وفعل الخير. نعم. نعم. Then he mentions a statement from the great Imam Ibn Jarir al Tabari and of course he is the one who did the um, great work of Tafsir. He said that Ibn Jarir he said May Allah have mercy upon him. He said that this is this these narrations are very comprehensive, and they contain a great comprehensive meaning in these ahadith. He said, and that is, if you look at someone who has more than what you have, then it can lead you to being ungrateful and wanting what that person has, and wanting what that person has from the affairs of the dunya, and this will lead you to be ungrateful for what Allah Taala has already given you. He said, but when you look at those who have less than you in the affairs of the dunya, then what you have will become apparent. What Allah Ta'ala has given you will become apparent and clear, and it shall make you grateful, inshallah, to better Allah. Ta'ala. Naam ya shaykhana. This is the great Imam Ibn Jarir. أهمية شكر الله عز وجل على نعمة وذلك بأن الشكر أيضا تدوم النعم الشكر تدوم النعم ولئن شكرتم لأجدنكم فالإنسان إذا يستشعر نعمة الله وينظر ما أنعم الله عز وجل عليه بالدين والخلق والخلق وسائل ذلك وما أكرمه من نعم هذا باعث على شكر الله عز وجل وعلينا أن نشكر الله ونحمده في كل حين وان الله يرضى عن عبده ان ياكل الاكل او يشرب الشربة فيشكر الله عز وجل عليها فعلينا ان نشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى على نعمه الكبيره التي لا تعد ولا تحصى ولان بالشكر تدوم النعم. نعم. And then the Sheikh may Allah preserve him he said so this is a tremendous hadith, a tremendous narration that it is proof upon the importance of thanking Allah wa ta'ala for the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. This hadith is proof that shows the importance that we have to be grateful to Allah ta'ala. He said, and being grateful and thankful, it will cause about an increase. It will cause for Allah ta'ala to increase the blessings. And then he mentioned the, the ayat, what can be translated as, and if you are thankful, then we shall increase you. If you are thankful, we shall increase you. He said, so being grateful, 
is a reason for Allah Ta'ala to increase what he has given you. He said, so look at what you have been given by way of manners and by way of